What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the Trade Federation's battle droid before the B1s, the HKB3 Hunter Killer Droid. That name probably gets your attention, as the HK series of assassin droids gave the galaxy the most terrifying and humorous droid of all, HK47. That is a very clever turn of phrase, Master. Your brain is very unmeatbag like. That was nearly 4,000 years before the HKB3, but various descendants of the HK had been holding up the mantle for years. The original models were built by Zerka Corporation, but over all that time, the ability to produce something as deadly as this line of droids had disseminated across the galaxy to the point that many companies were able to produce droids of this quality. The HKB3 was produced by Bactoid Combat Automata, the same company that would later make most of the Trade Federation's security droids. It is classified as a 4th degree droid, which means they were purposely made for combat. They are about the same height as a B1, at around 1.93 meters or 6 feet 4 inches, somewhere between a Keldor's height and a Wookiee. What's really interesting is that their armor is made of quadanium steel, the same material used on the heavy turbo lasers found on the Death Stars. This was more powerful than the B1s, and perhaps even the B2, which meant this thing wasn't going down with a single blaster bolt. It is interesting to wonder if a slug rifle would have been better for targets like this, but of course an ion weapon would just short circuit a droid, and when it came to the Jedi, well, their lightsabers did what lightsabers do. Unless you're a CB3 Cortosis droid, can't forget about the droid that nearly undermined Sidious's plans. Another interesting feature were these modular arms. Your standard unit could handle blasters like a fleshy organic, but the arms could be easily swapped out for these built-in blasters that synchronize with the targeting computers for incredible accuracy. All of the Tabana gas required would be kept in packs around the belt line. This triple laser arm was preferred for security patrols, and it was this scope that translated additional data to the processors in its rectangular head. But like most Trade Federation droids up to the Battle of Naboo, these two relied on a central control computer. By looking at the sensor pack of both the HKB3 and B1, you can see how much more compact the latter is. And remember, after a slave boy from Tatooine showed just how vulnerable it is to have your army rely on these control computers, all the battle droids from then on out could operate independently with their own basic AIs. The cost of one of the hunter killers was 19,130 credits brand new, which is around 10 times the cost of a B1, but less than a droidica. Now as for their history, we see them in action during this Stark hyperspace war of 44 BBY. On the planet Troikan, Jedi were handling negotiations between the Trade Federation Minister New Gunray and Stark himself. When the Pirate Lord revealed his intentions to kill the Republic's representatives, Gunray pressed a button on his Meccano chair that opened up commands to the droid bodyguards. The problem was, he said kill them all, so these four droids opened up on everyone in the room. Valorum was in there too, but luckily for the Republic, his Jedi bodyguards were able to deflect the bolts coming in from both the droids and Stark's fighters. But this was a rather small area, and in the firefight, Wookiee Jedi Master Taivaka was cut down. A split second later, Qui-Gon would slice through the droids with a single slash. Happening concurrent to all this, a young Quinlan Vos and his master Tholm were investigating the suspicious circumstances of a back-to-plant explosion. Here they are ambushed by an HKB-3 with his modified triple blaster arm. The bolts occupied the two Jedi for a while, but by calling on the Force, their speed and agility was able to outmaneuver the HK, with the two Jedi closing in for a coordinated attack. Though they survived unscathed, you can see Quinlan respects this droid's ability, saying if a hunter-killer droid is there, quote, someone is serious about protecting the secrets of this place. That is the last time we see this droid in action, but throughout the Clone Wars, there were remote locations in the galaxy that were said to be still patrolled by these old Trade Federation units. Even in these obscure areas, the HKB-3 struck fear into those that dared to trespass on Separatist property. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear its cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. It was first introduced in the comic Star Wars 36, and was named in the Scavenger's Guide to Droids, where it also got its price. In different artwork, there are some variations on the photoreceptors, with these red lines or two eye-like receptors. And definitely let me know what you guys think about this droid. Do you wish we could have seen more of it in the Clone Wars? And do you like its design? Not sure why, but to me it looks like a mix of a B1 and Chappie on steroids. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But that's it for the Trade Federation security droid before the B1. 
If you want to connect with us, help support the channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make these videos, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, the HK Legacy will never die, and the Force will be with you, always.